Beetlejuice, say his name three times and let the wacky times roll. Surreal and overly, insanely bonkers while on a sugar high and lasting for four seasons, from 1989 to 1991, fans of Beetlejuice and Lydia got to carry on and join them on their crazy adventures in the Beetlejuice cartoon series. And the show was just off the charts wild with how weird and manic it could be, and us kids absolutely loved the show for it. Where each week Lydia and Beetlejuice, who are now best pals, would embark on all kinds of out of this world adventures. Which literally did go out of this world. With a great deal of the action taking place in the surreal afterlife dimension known as the Neverworld. A dimension of limitless bounds of the imagination. Just like the movie it's based on, the Beetlejuice cartoon has become an important staple to many people's childhoods. And for good reason! This naughty cartoon was awesome! It's your time. So Kmart shoppers, today we are going to look into the first true sequel to Beetlejuice by exploring 10 things that you didn't know about the Beetlejuice cartoon. So, you know, let's stop wasting time and check it out! Number 10, Beetlejuice on the small screen. So the Beetlejuice movie is released in March 1988 and was surprisingly a huge financial success that no one really saw coming. It made $74.7 million on its $15 million budget, making it very profitable, and made Tim Burton a new sought-after director, in which his version of a Batman movie was commissioned with him as director, a project that he was trying to get off the ground before Beetlejuice came out. Beetlejuice also won an Academy Award for Best Makeup, as well as winning two Saturn Awards for Best Horror Movie and, once again, Best Makeup. But all the accolades aside, one audience demographic that Beetlejuice really appealed to was children, where just like fellow supernatural comedy before it, Ghostbusters, children just gravitated to this story about an afterlife trickster, which led to child-targeted merchandise, including Beetlejuice action figures, a Beetlejuice talking doll, Beetlejuice video game, and even more recently, Beetlejuice makeup, and a Beetlejuice bath duck. A poultry geist indeed. So this prompted Warner Brothers to think, well, those Beetlejuice products sure are pretty successful, as the kids seem to really love Beetlejuice. So, let's make an animated series based on Beetlejuice. Once again, just like the Ghostbusters franchise before it, where kids can continue to see the wacky afterlife adventures of the ghost with the most. Only in the cartoon, there no doubt would have been less Beetlejuice yelling out the F word while grabbing his beetle nuts. <laughs> However, before the cartoon officially went forward, another Burton-related property was being considered to get its own cartoon instead. Number 9. The Beetlejuice cartoon could have been dropped for a Batman one instead. So the Beetlejuice cartoon went into development and was being helmed by Warner Brothers Television as well as the Geffen Company which also distributed the movie with the Beetlejuice cartoon series being one of two animated ventures the Geffen Company would produce the other being Beavis and Butthead Do America in fact, the company's founder, David Geffen, acted as a producer on the show as well as Tim Burton Inc. But more on that soon and another important element to the Beetlejuice series was the Canadian studio and animation company, Nelvana, which was a huge creative force for the Beetlejuice cartoons, with several Nelvana producers also producing the show. In fact, a great deal of Nelvana's animated series are based on existing properties, including the adventures of Tintin, the Magic School Bus, Star Wars Droids, Star Wars Ewoks, Free Willy, An American Tale, Donkey Kong, The Neverending Story, and the Tales from the Crypt cartoon, Tales from the Crypt Keeper. However, another Burton-related franchise nearly got in the way of the Beetlejuice cartoon's development. 
According to IMDb, with all its IMDb-ness, originally Nelvana weren't working on the Beetlejuice cartoon, but were in fact making an animated series based on Batman, which definitely would have been the right time for it thanks to the 1989 movie and just how successful that was. And despite being well into the development of this Batman cartoon, Nelvana abandoned Batman and decided to get on board on the Beetlejuice cartoon and make that one instead. However, a Batman animated series based on the Tim Burton Batman movies, or at least inspired by them, would actually go on to be made a few years later. Number 8. Tim Burton Returns so with many creative forces on board the Beetlejuice animated series, what about the big guy himself? Hollywood's dark prince, Tim Burton. Well, surely at that point in time, he would have been too busy making movies, right? Well, wrong, as Burton did return to oversee the Beetlejuice cartoon, with him being the show's developer and producer, as well as being credited as the cartoon's creator. So it seems that Burton was a leading creative influence for the show, with the Beetlejuice show being produced by Tim Burton Inc., also known as Tim Burton Productions, a company that has been producing Burton-related movies since Edward Scissorhands, as well as two other TV shows, including Family Dog and Wednesday. So the Beetlejuice cartoon was a true Beetlejuice sequel, long before the upcoming Beetlejuice Beetlejuice and the notoriously failed Beetlejuice Goes Hawaiian. Number 7. Danny Elfman Returns 2 Not only did Tim Burton return for the Beetlejuice cartoon, but so did composer Danny Elfman, making it feel like a true Burton slash Beetlejuice product. Well, okay, technically Elfman worked on the show's main theme. Interestingly, at that time, Elfman was also working on the main theme for fellow animated series, The Simpsons. For the theme for the Beetlejuice cartoon, the theme for the Beetlejuice cartoon is a rearranged version of the theme from the movie, with new musical cues added, making it sound familiar, but new and different at the same time. This new, manic, altered version of the Beetlejuice theme is lots of fun regardless, and adds on to the already iconic theme. Then there's the show's intro. Man, back in the day, this thing was insane and looked like nothing you had ever seen before. Or at least in a TV show, letting you know at the start of each episode that you're about to be watching something truly out of this world. Many people have commented over the years of how the intro feels manic and hyperactive and full of energy, totally setting the tone of the show. Supposedly, it was originally planned for the intro to use stop-motion animation, as Burton would often use stop-motion animation, well at least back then. But it was considered too expensive, so the idea was scrapped. But regardless, <laughs> what can you say, the intro looks great, and really gets you prepared to go on some crazy adventures with Beetlejuice. Number 6. Major Changes so I think it's safe to say that the Beetlejuice cartoon was more loosely based off the movie. Yes, it featured the character Beetlejuice, who was a supernatural prankster, but there are quite a few deviations. I guess in order to convert Beetlejuice into a cartoon for kids. Firstly, the main characters in the movie are in fact the Maitlands, Adam and Barbara. We see the story through their eyes and go on this journey with them. However, in the cartoon, the Maitlands are nowhere to be seen. They are completely written out of the story. The cartoon still features the Dietzes, who actually still live in the Maitland home, consisting of Delia and Charles Dietz and Lydia. The biggest deviation in the cartoon is that Beetlejuice and Lydia are best friends. Unlike the movie where, although Beetlejuice is funny, in that film he's still a crazed maniacal pervert. However, in the cartoon, he's a friendlier G-rated version of the character where he's now no longer the villain, but the hero. A whole two years before Terminator 2 would do the same thing. And I guess it makes sense to go on adventures with Beetlejuice, rather than him being the villain, because what are you gonna do, have Beetlejuice just get defeated every episode? <laughs> where Beetlejuice and Lydia often go on adventures in the Neverworld, which would lead them to get involved in some wacky caper or scenario. In fact, Lydia loved going on adventures with Beetlejuice and leaving the boundaries of the living world. 
When watching the show as a kid, there were a few times where I felt there may have been something romantic between Beetlejuice and Lydia, but that might be because I had memories of the movie where Beetlejuice was trying to marry Lydia. That, and in the cartoon, he always called Lydia Babes, which I thought was a bit weird. But I don't think there was anything romantic. They were just really good buddies who just loved going on adventures. Also in the cartoon, Beetlejuice sometimes goes by the name BJ. And okay, someone behind the scenes must have known what they were doing. This must have been an off-the-cuff joke slipped in for the grown-ups, surely. So yeah, Beetlejuice sometimes is now known as BJ. And in several episodes, we even meet members of Beetlejuice's family, including Beetlejuice's father. Yeah, the cartoon actually goes there, Beetlejuice has a dad. And it's weird. He even has a brother called Donny Juice and a mother called Bee Juice. And as Ranker pointed out, at one stage Beetlejuice even grows a leprechaun on his back. Yeah, yeah, remember when I said the show was crazy? Well, it is, it's crazy. It's been suggested that the fact that Beetlejuice has parents in the Neverworld could indicate that he actually isn't the ghost of a dead person, but a ghoul who was born into the Neverworld. And the cartoon really hits home that Lydia is a goth who loves scary and spooky things. In fact, Lydia in the cartoon is so much of a goth, in one episode it's explained that she's allergic to roses, but she still finds joy in dead roses. Now that's some pretty hardcore levels of goth. Number five, enter the new characters and a classic Burton character. So there are many familiar faces returning to the Beetlejuice cartoon, but there are also some new ones too. These included two new characters who were Lydia's friends, called Bertha and Prudence. Yeah, look, when I was a kid, I was never a fan of these awkward characters and sometimes found them irritating, but that's just me. Lydia also had a rival in the form of Claire Brewster. No relation to Charlie Brewster. A sort of Valley Girl style character who often puts Lydia down, with the two often going against each other. Oh, and Lydia also has a neurotic cat called Percy. Beetlejuice also has his own new lineup of acquaintances, including Jacques Laline, a French skeletal bodybuilder. <laughs> and yes, yeah, saying that out loud made me realize just how hilarious that is as well as Ginger, a tap dancing spider. Is Ginger dead? Is she a ghost? Was she once human? I don't know, she's just a tap dancing spider. And the monster across the street, a big hairy fluffy cowboy thing who often has no patience for Beetlejuice's crap. Beetlejuice also has a talking car called Doomy, which I always found really weird. It's like someone in the production saw the talking car from Who Framed Roger Rabbit and thought to themselves, oh yeah, we could totally put that in our show. And there's a character called Barry Me Not, who appears in the commercials in the Neverworld. And what makes this character unique is that he was entirely CGI, a very rare novelty for a kid's show back then. The show also features a character called Vince Prince, whose name is a reference to Vincent Price. Interestingly, the depressed Vince Prince character is a character from one of Burton's earliest movies, as he was the protagonist of Tim Burton's short 1982 movie, Vincent. Now, characters being based on other characters aside, it's said that several of the characters in the Beetlejuice cartoons are also based off other people, including Lydia's look being based off silent movie actress Theda Barra, Jacques Laline being based off fitness coach Jack Lalaney, and Ginger the tap dancing spider being based off actress singer dancer Ginger Rogers. In addition to that, it's said that the monster across the street was modelled after the Looney Tunes character, Gossamer. And yeah, would you look at that? And also in a few episodes, the shrunken headman from the movie does make the odd appearance. That's pretty cool. Number 4, Beetlejuice and Lydia are voiced by X-Men. So what about the actors who lend their voices to help bring the characters in the Beetlejuice cartoon to life? Or, in this case, afterlife. Firstly, Beetlejuice was voiced by Canadian stage actor Stephen Wimette. Although mainly known for stage acting, he also provided his voice for other animated shows, including voicing the character of Pompadour in Barbar and Archangel in the X-Men cartoon. 
and I think he does a great job as Beetlejuice. He doesn't really sound like Michael Keaton per se, but the voice he provides, as well as the character that he injects into the voice, as well as his energy, does feel very Beetlejuice-ish. We Met actually did heavily study Michael Keaton's performance as Beetlejuice, and originally did have more of a Michael Keaton, Beetlejuice sounding voice, one that was more movie accurate. But We Met was told to tone it down, in order to not have the voice sound so edgy, and to be more accessible for kids. I guess, after all, this was no longer a movie, but a cartoon. Pretty stupid, huh? In fact, they're having a celebration for me right now. Lydia was voiced by Canadian actress Alison Court, who also voiced one of the Ewoks in the Ewoks cartoon and Jubilee in the X-Men cartoon. So wait a minute. Beetlejuice and Lydia are voiced by Archangel and Jubilee. Most fascinating indeed. She also voiced the character Claire Redfield in the Resident Evil franchise. Once again, she doesn't sound identical to Renata Ryder, and definitely gives the character more playfulness, but she is still great at bringing Lydia Dietz to life for this new medium. And despite sounding more youthful, she can also convey intelligence and street smarts into the character. Beetlejuice, I want you to say you're sorry. You're sorry. Beetlejuice, just say it! Fellow voice actress Tara Strong also provided her voice for several characters, including Bertha and Claire. Strong has had a huge career in voice work, including providing the voice for Raven in the Teen Titans cartoons and the Powerpuff Girls as Bubbles, among many, many more. According to Looper, before Alison Court was cast as Lydia, she was called back for another audition, but couldn't because she was on vacation and got really badly sunburnt. So for the first episode, Tara Strong actually voiced the character of Lydia Dietz. But ultimately, the powers that be didn't think that Strong and Beetlejuice voice actor Stephen Wimet had the best chemistry. So Court was eventually cast, presumably after she got over her sunburn. Ginger the Tap Dancing Spider and Prudence were provided by Tabitha St. Germain, who would go on to voice Rarity in My Little Pony, Friendship is Magic. Len Carlson voiced several characters in the show, including the monster across the street, and he previously voiced the Green Goblin in the 1960s Spider-Man cartoon, and a few years later also voiced Swamp Thing in the Swamp Thing cartoon. He also voiced Senator Robert Kelly in the as-mentioned X-Men cartoon. Yeah, another X-Men cast member. And the X-Men connections aren't over yet, as Ron Rubin, who voiced Morph in that show, also voiced Beetlejuice's car, Doomy. Seriously, what's the connection between Beetlejuice and the X-Men? I must know! Is there like, I don't know, some kind of missing link? Number three, the show was a massive success. Just like the movie it's based on, the Beetlejuice animated series was a huge hit. It was very successful when broadcast on network station ABC. Yep, it seems that fans of Beetlejuice and maybe even a few new fans couldn't get enough of seeing Beetlejuice and Lydia continuing their adventures on the small screen. In fact, the Beetlejuice cartoon even won a Daytime Emmy Award. And when season 4 was broadcast, it was now being aired on the Fox Kids channel, making it one of the first shows to be on Fox Kids. In fact, the Beetlejuice show created a rare television anomaly in that while season 4 was being broadcast on weekdays on Fox Kids, it was also being aired Saturday mornings on ABC, creating an unprecedented situation where the same show was being shown on two different network broadcasts. Yep, it seems that in the early 90s, people just couldn't get enough of the Beetlejuice cartoon, and that no doubt an action figure lineup would be inevitable. R right? Well, maybe not. Number two, no one got any toys except for Burger King. Now, Kenner came through when it came to providing action figures for the Beetlejuice movie, where the figures themselves were fun and colorful. 
So with Beetlejuice now finding newfound fame in the cartoon series, it would seem that Kenner would indeed be getting down with making an action figure lineup based on the cartoon. And originally they were. Yep, Kenner was getting to work on an action figure lineup based on the Beetlejuice animated series, which no doubt would not only feature the Bee Man himself, but many of the show's interesting characters. However, despite being in development at the Kenner lab, the toy lineup was abandoned. So if kids loved the cartoon and wanted action figures, I guess they would have to try and track down the figures from the Beetlejuice movie lineup. Oh well, at least the invention of eBay was right around the corner. However, Burger King did some promotional merchandise with the Beetlejuice cartoon, as you could get a small toy based off the cartoon with children's meals. Seriously, what is the name of a Burger King Happy Meal equivalent? That's something I could never figure out. Now, although the Burger King toys weren't as well sculpted as the Kenner action figures for the movie, they still give an insight into what the action figures based on the cartoon might have looked like, providing that better quality and detail was used. And if these Burger King toys weren't doing it for you, then you had the Beetlejuice cartoon Harvey comics, which I actually did read and I love these comics, as well as the Beetlejuice cartoon Game Boy game, where handheld gamers can play as Beetlejuice and defeat a heap of undead ghouls in order to save Lydia from the clutches of an evil demon. I never played this game, but you know, it was available if you wanted to, so there. Number one, Legacy. So as mentioned, the Beetlejuice cartoon was hugely successful and got rave reviews. An example of this is Entertainment Weekly, which saw the show as a callback to classical Looney Tunes days of old, as well as being, quote, filled with sight gags, puns, and imaginative naughtiness, and concluding with, Beetlejuice is richer entertainment than you would expect on Saturday morning. Once again, thanks Looper for sharing this piece of information. However, after four seasons and 94 episodes, no new episodes of the Beetlejuice animated series was made, with the last episode of season four airing on December the 6th, 1991. But the animation would stay in syndication for a while. The Beetlejuice cartoon has gone on to be a widely loved and praised animated series, one that broke the mold of your standard Saturday morning cartoon of that time. Needless to say, it's aged like a fine wine, and those who grew up with it appreciate its manic energy, as well as its over-the-top zaniness and alluring oddball antics. It was definitely an inventive and creative show, which wasn't just out to be some mindless fluff for children to chew their sugary bowl of cereal with but it treated its child audience with intelligence through its creativity and witty humor and gags. Many also see the Beetlejuice cartoon as being a great addition to the Tim Burton lore, adored by many fans, particularly those who like earlier Burton when he was in his heyday. But above all, the Beetlejuice cartoon is about friendship and how Beetlejuice and Lydia could always eventually find common ground and work together to stop whatever threats or situation they may encounter. The Beetlejuice cartoon may have strayed greatly from the original movie, story-wise, but it was still a treasured and loved addition in the Beetlejuice mythology. Blah, blah, blah. Me saying something to end the video with blah, blah, blah. You all get the drill by now. Regardless, the Beetlejuice cartoon is a classic and a show that I would always be happy to return back to. In fact, the show has been here with us the whole time. Because if you look in my background carefully, you can see the Beetlejuice cartoon DVD box set. Anyway, I'm Minty. And let us never forget that time that Beetlejuice grew a leprechaun out of his back. <laughs> okay. See ya.